What is up, my fellow Achievements? Hopefully all of you are having a very, very good day today. So today, I want to make a Boku no Hero Academia discussion video talking about who could the UA Trader be. Now, before I get into the content of this video, I want to do a quick disclaimer for those that are clicking on this video. If you are an anime only, for instance, you have finished season 2 of the anime, then I recommend you not to continue watching this video, because it will contain spoilers for anime onlys, and if you're not up to date with the manga of Boku no Hero Academia, then this also will contain spoilers. So even if you're past the anime, but you're still not caught up, I don't recommend you to watch this. So anyways, with that being said, disclaimer out of the way, let's talk about what the main subject of this video is about. Who is the UA Trader? So to kind of give a little bit of information, we've all known for a while now that there is obviously a trader in UA. They, there is someone that is feeding information to the villain organizations, and we know for a fact it has to be someone a part of the main cast, for instance, a part of the students. And the question that's constantly popped up constantly is certain furies on individual characters. Now, there's been a lot. There's been a lot of variety when it comes to who could possibly be the traitor, and so I kind of want to go over each individual one, discuss it, and if there is a possibility that they could be a traitor. And also, who is, you know, someone that's suspect that could turn out to be a traitor as well that no one has really talked about either. So to start off, let's talk about one of the more common traitor furies, which is Kaminari. I think if you've ever tried to look into the traders of who could be the trader of UA, then most likely you've heard of Kaminari. It's a very, very popular theory. It's been ongoing for a very long time, and there's a lot of information that actually backs it up. It makes a lot of sense for Kaminari to actually be the trader. But even then, though, even though there is a lot of information that can back this up, there is still likely possibility he could not be the traitor. Just maybe everything is falling into place, and it looks like, you know, he is the traitor. And this can be said for a majority of the people on this list I want to be talking about, but I don't think I really necessarily need to dive into Kaminari's overall traitor theory, because I think if you have dived into any of this like type of, you know, info at all, you most likely have heard about it already, so I don't want to kind of rehash information that you probably have already heard. So, kind of going past that, let's move into the next category and talk about who were on this list or who is now off the list. Togata. Now, we all know if we finish the overhaul arc what happened to Togata. He is an extraordinary character, definitely one of my favorite characters of the series after what he did. He He's incredible, and I don't think anyone can refute that fact of how amazing he was, and when we finally get to see him in the anime, it's just going to be truly spectacular. But getting back on topic, though, when Togata was first introduced, there was many that speculated, and I even talked about it, that there is a likely possibility that he could turn out to be a traitor. And the reason why he could turn out to be a traitor is because he fit the overall cliche of a shonen. Now, I know for a fact, time and time again, Horikoshi has shown that he doesn't like to constantly follow the shonen path, the shonen cliches that we see in series. There is sometimes shonen cliches, but not often. And because of the introduction of Togata, and it was at the start of an arc and all that, many assumed that Togata could potentially be the traitor of UA, and since he was that senpai character, it just fit the mold. There was two things that most likely people predicted. Either A, he was going to be the traitor, turned against, you know, Izuku, since he was that senpai character that was teaching him the ways and all that, and he was an incredible person, or he was going to turn out to die. He was going to die at the end of the arc, one or the other. That was the two things that many predicted, and the second one almost, in fact, did happen in the overhaul arc. But overall, though, many predicted he could potentially be the traitor because of the way his character is designed and the way this usually goes on in Shonen, usually this adult senpai type character either dies or he turns into a turncoat. One or the other usually happens and he was just like I said perfect setup for that and after the progression of the arc that fury overall collapsed in on itself because after seeing how far he pushed himself to actually be a hero and save just a single little girl, he definitely could not be a, you know, a villain. There's just no way he's a traitor because of the way he was and even when we learned to 
his backstory. His backstory's ba backed up his overall, you know, hero potential and all that, and how he could not be a villain, because his entire motivation was to continue pressing forward, even though he lost a lot, or even though he, you know, was someone that was very bad or not good with his ability, he, you know, continued to press forward, and he became what he was. So, he could not be a villain, especially at the very least in the past, or in that current point of time, there's no way he was a traitor. Now, there is a possibility he could turn into a turncoat later on, which I still doubt. I, I doubt that. I, I doubt he's going to turn to the villain side, because, I mean, with how his character development went, and what happened with Night Eye and all that, there's just no way he probably could turn into a villain. But, there is a slim possibility. There is a possibility, even if it's slim, even 1% out of 100%, there is a possibility. But at this time, though, he is definitely not a UA trader, at least the one that has already been mentioned. So let's leave off of that one. So diving into the next character, let's talk about Kurishima. Now, Kurishima, exactly in the overhaul arc, very similar, same arc as with Togata, Kurishima has always been this very bizarre character, because he seemed really cool, he seemed like a good guy, but there was a lot of things we didn't really know about. He always seemed to have something wrong with him, like he seemed to lack confidence within himself, the resolve within himself. There, it was just something that continuously popped up here and there time and time again, and it speculated something definitely had to happen in his past. Now, when the overhaul arc came around, we got to finally get to see a little bit of his past and kind of what made him who he is today, and why he tries to act like he does, and his flashback overall does give him credibility to where he doesn't seem to be a traitor, because he was able to find the light and reach out of the darkness, find his path, thanks to Mina. And besides, you know, shipping bait and all that, how there's a potential possibility that, you know, Kurishima and Mina are going to get together, it just, Mina was a very important factor in Kurishima's early life. It made it to where he realized she was someone that he strived to be, and try to be like, and kind of got him out of his slump that he was in. And at the end of that arc, when she talked to him, it just showed how their character dynamic is, that they both appreciate each other, Mina cares about Kurishima, and Kurishima cares about her. We got to see that. And so, with the backstory, it gave Kurishima credibility to where there is a potential possibility he is not a traitor. However, there is some blanks and holes in his flashback. We do know that he encountered a lot of villains, and he was even inspired by a villain in the arc. And so there is a lot of correlation with villains when it comes to Kurishima. So the potential possibility of him being a traitor is there. But at this time, there's a lot more other contenders that hold that candle much closer that could definitely be the traitor. But even then, though, Kurishima, he's not written off. There is possibility that he could be one. Now, moving over into the next one, let's talk about one that has been in front of us the entire time, but we just could not see her. Yes, pun intended. Invisible Girl, Toru. Invisible Girl is a character that we don't really know much about. We, we really don't. When you really think about it, she's probably had the least amount of screen time besides Jiro in this series, and that could be because maybe Horikoshi didn't have the time to dive into her yet, even though he has a big big cast of characters. He has spent a lot of time developing individual characters. I mean, look at the recent two chapters. He spent a lot of time on that. And so, even though he might not have had time to dive into Invisible Girl, there is something about her quirk that stands out. As you know, a traitor that we know of UA, they have to be getting information somehow. And when you look at her quirk, it definitely fits the ability of gaining information. She has the ability to be invisible. Now, from everything we know so far, she can't really turn off her invisibility. Every time we see her, she's always invisible. No one's ever got to see her face. Horikoshi has not done a face reveal or anything. We've never got to see how she looks. So, from all our understanding is, is she is permanently invisible. That's like a passive, basically, when it comes to her quirk. And so, she could easily just sneak into a room no one would know she's there and hear things that she shouldn't be hearing. So, her quirk overall backs up the potential possibility she could be a traitor. But, let's go one step further as well. We also know that she could potentially be lying about her quirk. Maybe she does have the ability to turn off her quirk and, you know, act normal. Or maybe she's hiding certain things that we never knew because we don't really know much about her. So, the possibility of her being a spy is there. Since she is someone that we know the least amount of when it comes to the majority of the cast, and also going even further that she has a quirk like that, 
Possibility. It's definitely a possibility, and we just need to get clarification from Hori Koshi before we can really dive any further into that one. So moving over into the next candidate, let's talk about Minata. Now, Minata is someone that has the possibility of being one, and I know this is going to come as a surprise to many. Because when you think of Minata, you think of a gag character. You think of someone that is a joke. You don't think of someone that could be that serious. And I understand, because Minata, the way his characterization is and all of that, he looks like a character that is just, for the sake of comedy, and being a pervert. And you shouldn't take him too seriously. That's basically what everybody's going to view his character like. And I've seen many, many times throughout the journey of this series, since I have been reading the manga and been watching the anime, I know not many really like Minata. It's very obvious. There's a certain select few that like Minata, but overall, not many really like him. I like him, but I can understand why people don't like him. And it's because of the way his character is. He's a typical perverted character. That, that's what he is. And Horikoshi has even stated a long time ago that Minata is one of his favorite characters. He stated this. He went out of his way to actually say that. And it's always just been peculiar to me why he would say something like that about Minata, even though he's just so standard. He's a standard character in a shonen. He, he really is. And so I'm like, he doesn't really stand out that much, which that's the big key word right there. He doesn't. He is someone that can easily mix in with the group and just hide behind the scenes. Think about this, okay? We have seen many, many strange things about Minata. Number one, when you look at his character, he's a pervert, yes. But we've also seen that he's incredibly intelligent. He's very, very intelligent. And he's even outsmarted one of the teachers, Midnight. We even saw this in Season 2, if you want clarification. Season 2, when he outsmarted Midnight and managed to trap her and all that and get away... He has shown incredible ability to think about the situation and strategy and overcome opponents, even teachers. So that is something that we need to take note of. Going a step further as well, we also need to know that his motivation of being a hero is very flimsy or weird. It's very different from others, and it just, it's like, what? Like, many, when they found out his motivation, it just makes you scratch your head like, that's some very flimsy or weird motivation. It doesn't really suit with all the other characters we've seen thus far, which is very weird. And going one step further as well... We also need to talk about the room arc. You remember that little mini arc we got where we got to see every individual character's room and all that? Well, Minata is the only character we didn't get to see. We never got to see Minata's room. He asked everybody if you want to come see my room. Remember what he did? He's like, come see my room. He's being creepy and all that with the, you know, the meme face. Everybody made a meme face on that. But right there, that's a very peculiar thing. Because of his character, because of how many recognize or know him, obviously people wouldn't think he would have anything interesting in his room because it'd probably be all perverted stuff. And so when he acted creepy like that, nobody saw his room. Nobody got to see what was really in it, which is very shady, very suspicious. Now, let's talk about this one for a second, okay? Minata also has a knack for spying on people. Now, I know that mainly goes to women. He respects women. He's that type of character. But if you think about it, he is always watching the women. But what if he always was doing that, but he went over to also watch other people as well? He's good at spying. What if he extended that over to everybody else? And it looked like he was just looking at women. Think about that. Now, if he does turn out to be the traitor, I do think that's still a part of his character, him being a pervert. But, I do believe he's using that majority of that as cover for he can do certain things, if he is the traitor. Now, we just need time to think about that one. It is a possibility, because there's a lot of things about him that are very shady, and we don't know much about. So, yeah. Now... Moving past that one, I guess basically what I want to say is, is there is a lot, a lot of characters that could turn out to be a traitor. Like the recent one with Aoyama and how he has, you know, a very weird quirk that negatively affects him. And definitely from the latest chapter, he seems even more shady now, but I've already discussed that in depth in my previous video. So I'm not going to get back into that one. But basically, there is a lot of characters that could turn out to be him. And 
Who knows? Maybe it's someone that we thought was a good guy all along and it's just going to shock all of us. Hardikoshi has thrown curveballs once before. But I just wanted to bring it to everybody's attention, the characters that could potentially turn out to be a traitor and some that might not. Togata obviously is not one, but he could turn into one, even if it's a 1% chance. Kurishima, he seems to be out of all the characters, he seems to be one that's the least shady, but he is someone that could because some of the blanks in his past and then invisible girl we just don't know much about her to really know and then minata just weird stuff about him his character would definitely fit in with it and kaminari as we know that has a lot of potential for him to turn out to be a, a you know a traitor villain as well just because of how he is and what we found out through the fury that many people have dived into so yeah there you go i just want to discuss that let me know your thoughts in the comments below do you agree with what i said who do you think could possibly be the traitor if i didn't mention them and i love you guys you have a wonderful day or night wherever you live if you enjoy my content please subscribe if you like this video please leave a like and if you want to get notified for whenever i upload a video please click the bell icon down below so please be safe chibi out